I wanted to talk about the Truman Delusion. This is the last episode that I had. Um, the, the relapse I had a few weeks ago, it was there. I was back in it. Um, you know, completely believing that I was in this world. The Truman Show. It's always there. And it's been on my mind a lot. And I wanted to talk about it. So, I watched The Truman Show when I was, I don't know, 11 years old, I think I was, 10, 11, well, yeah, it must have been 11. Um, I just started secondary school. I was always, um, I never felt I fitted in. In primary school, <laughs> in primary school, I went to an old boys school and um, I just I never felt, I, I, you know, in, in the playground, all the, all the boys, not all the boys, but a lot of the boys wanted to play sport and <laughs> cops and robbers. I always wanted to play um, mummies and daddies, and I would always be the mummy. Um, no one wanted to play that. Um, I spent a lot of time by myself in the library, always reading books about um, Queen Elizabeth I. Anyway, so I, ne I never felt I fitted in. Um, when I got to secondary school, at the age of 11, you know, I went from a small primary school, there were about 30 boys in each year, in secondary school, I went to a big Jewish secondary school in North London, and the year was 250 people, the school was huge, I was, I don't know, I felt, I really struggled when I started secondary school and I don't know, everyone's always like, oh, you know, it's great, you know, you're starting secondary school, you're a big boy now, and I was like, I'm scared, but I didn't articulate that. And if I struggled in that year group in primary school, the 30 boys, I really struggled in this massive year group of 250 people, boys and girls, and I really just struggled to find my way in the secondary school initially. And that's when the Truman Show delusion, that's when I watched the Truman Show and when the delusion, well, sometime around then it started, because I, I wanted, I wanted to be liked and respected and I, you know in the film The Truman Show everyone really likes and respects Jim Carrey's character and I thought if I'm on this TV show you know people are watching me because I thought I thought being famous I thought it meant people would like you and respect you and people didn't like me and I was a weird kid. I don't know what people thought of me. I was awkward socially. I, I, I don't know. I, but being on the being famous, being on this TV show, I thought people people will like me. When I was uh, in primary school, I was chosen to be in a film that they were making. I was chosen to be in the main part and I'll never forget. I was, so I was about hmm, nine or 10 at this time. I was chosen to be this, this, this main part and I did the filming and it was a, it was a, a film shoot in the morning and I came back to school in the afternoon. I will never forget. I walked into the classroom 
and all the boys that never spoke to me suddenly it was like a film when I walked into that classroom I floated from the entrance to the classroom to the to my seat at the back I or somewhere I, I floated there and and one boy after the other was saying oh how was it you know oh you're amazing like oh you're on film you all these boys that had never spoken to me suddenly interested and, and, and wanted to talk to me and I realised then that's how maybe you got people to like you was by being famous or known or on film an actor I wanted to be an actor I wanted to be seen because I was so I, I, I wanted to be seen like this because I'm out there even today I'm so I feel really difficult socially I feel challenged I feel awkward I've I, I struggle my mind is it's it's a difficult place to be socially because it's always like um, you know you need to keep thinking of things to say. Oh, it's not very interesting. You're really boring. Oh my God, you're not looking like what you're looking like. Like constant analysis and, and, and criticism constantly. It's so hard out there being with people. So. In this environment, like this, for example, people could see me as my true self relaxed and uninhibited and I thought on the Truman Show and that went on and on and I began to take uh, you know all the little signs you know I'd be uh, thinking of someone in my head and there they'd be on the street and it's I always I still get it or they text me I get it I had it the other day I was well I was actually talking to my friend about someone else hadn't texted me for ages they, they text me and this is why my mind is like oh my god I'm on the Truman Show because you know all these things happen and you know a song is, is playing in my head and it's on the radio it comes on the radio it's like all these signs I took and I still take And when I was, I need to wrap up because I'm running out of time. I'm looking at this. When I was finally diagnosed, when I was 20 with schizoaffective disorder, and they said, You're not on the Truman Show. It, it was. No, I, I can't take this because I need. I, I need to be seen. I can't be me with me. I'm a, I'm a nobody. But being... Is this making sense? So afterwards, I grieved after my diagnosis and realising I, I couldn't let it go. You know, I, I had this delusion of believing I was the Messiah after, after my diagnosis and years on. I thought I was the Messiah. I wrote all these letters to to high profile people. I'm the Messiah. I've got oh my goodness. And it's still there. And I'm starting to really I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. But it's still there. I still find it difficult out there. And I why am I doing these videos? Because desperately I want to be liked. Hmm. What to do about it? I don't know, but I know that I'm not. Well, I know what I need to do. I need to.
of myself and, and not need other people to not not need others validation and approval I need to validate and approve myself on my own I know that's what I need to do and I was going to say I know I'm not alone and I know this will resonate with people Thank you for watching.